Good day. I'm Drew, and today it's uh, some more delving into historical research. Right? So, this is a video response to a certain foolish fellow from the South who's got some um, differences with a certain Jew named Steven Spielberg over the issue of the advertisement of his movie, Lincoln, at the playing of a football game between two southern colleges. Right? Now, we know what the, the KKK, the uh, white supremacists and that kind, think of Jews and Lincoln and blacks. Right? Now, uh, it's under the guise of so-called, or euphemism of states' rats. But, as the... Uh, People who declare their secession against the United States have said the issue was slavery, right? Not states' rights. Slavery. Blacks keeping Africans as slaves, as property, right? And in their own words, right? I've actually printed the actual articles of secession from Georgia, Mississippi, South Carolina, and Texas. So we're going to read some of the sections of why they declared they were separating from the Union. Hmm? And uh, I find it kind of ironical that he's saying that uh, they were fighting for their independence, which is kind of stupid if you think about it, since, one, they were economically dependent on the British Empire, since most of the cotton went to the British Empire as part of their system of uh, global slavery. Right? They were completely dependent on it. That's why most of their weapons came from Britain. Or the British had to supply most of their weapons in order to fight, right? Because that was the British Empire's goal, is breaking up the country, as they've been doing for quite a long time. So, in the words of the Confederacy from Georgia, the people of Georgia, having dissolved their political connections with the government of the United States of America, Present to their confederates and the world the causes which have led to the separation. For the last ten years, we have numerous and serious causes of complaint against our non-slave-holding confederate states with reference to the subject of African slavery, right there in the beginning. They have endeavored to weaken our security, to disturb our domestic peace, tranquility, and persistently refuse to comply with their express constitutional obligations to us in reference to that property, and by the use of their power in the federal government has striven to deprive us of an equal enjoyment of the common territories of the Republic. This hostile policy of our Confederates has been pursued with every circumstance of aggravation which could arouse the passions and excite the hatred of our people, and has placed the two sections of the Union for many years past in the condition of virtual civil war. And, of course, this is a reference to the Fugitive Slave Act, which said that if a slave escapes to the north, uh, you can go up there, recapture him, and take him back. And they were kind of upset that people in the north didn't want to do that and uh, actively help the slaves escape. So, and uh, further down, it says, The party of Lincoln, called the Republican Party, under its present name and organization, is a region origin. It is admitted to be an anti-slavery party. So right there, the issue is slavery, right? Right there in their own friggin' words. Further on, all these classes saw this and felt it and cast about for new allies. The anti-slavery sentiment of the North offered the best chance for success. Anti-slavery party must necessarily look to the North alone for support, but a united North was now strong enough to control the government in all its departments, and a sectional party was therefore determined upon. Time and issue upon slavery were necessary to its completion and final triumph. The feeling of anti-slavery, which it was well known, was very general among the people of the North. Further, uh, northern anti-slavery men of all parties asserted the right to exclude slavery from the territories by congressional legislation, and demanded that prompt and Efficient exercise of this power to that end. And further, the claim itself was less arrogant and insulting than the reason which, with which she supported it. 
That reason was her fixed purpose to limit, restrain, and finally abolish slavery in the states where it exists. The South, with great unanimity, declared her purpose to resist the principle of prohibition in the last extremity. This particular question, in connection with the series of questions affecting the same subject, was finally disposed of by the defeat of probatory legislation. And further... With these principles on their banners, these utterances on their lips, the majority of the people of the North demand that we shall receive them as their rulers. Prohibition of slavery in the territories is the cardinal principle of this organization. Right? The Republican Party. So right there, what do you think? Georgia says that the issue for destroying the country on behalf of the British Empire was slavery. Right? Not states, right? Slavery. Keeping those blacks down. Right. So, from Mississippi, our position is thoroughly identified with the institution of slavery. Greatest material interest in the world. Labor supplies the product which constitutes by far the largest and most important portions of commerce on the earth. These products are peculiar to the climate verging on the tropical regions and by an imperious law of nature. None but the black race can bear exposure to the tropical sun. These products have become necessities of the world, and a blow at slavery is a blow at commerce and civilization. Oh, yeah. Right. There was no choice left to us but submission to the mandates of abolition or dis the solution of the Union, whose principles had been subverted to work our ruin. My God, they advocate Negro equality socially and politically and promote insurrection and indis- incendiarism in our midst. Let's see. Uh, made combinations and formed the socialist and carrot schemes of emancipation in the states and wherever else slavery exists. Seeks not to elevate or support slave, but destroy his present condition without providing a better. Uh, yeah, right. Right. Where it was illegal to... I mean, people could be hanged for educating slaves, right? Oh, boy. Okay, from South Carolina. Let's see what they get. Uh, they go into the whole thing about the Articles of Confederation from the original... All right. And in reference to the Fugitive Slave Act, the general government, as the common agent, passed laws to carry into effect these stipulations of the states. For many years, these laws were executed. But an increasing hostility on the part of the non-slaveholding states to the institution of slavery has led to a disregard for their obligations, and the laws of the general government have ceased to affect the objects of the Constitution, which right there is misnomer since the issue is all men are created equal, right? Of course, they say that uh, the Bible endorses slavery, so the Bible is above the Constitution. But further along, a geographic line has been drawn across the Union, and all the states north of that line have united in the election of a man to the high office of President of the United States whose opinions and purposes are hostile to slavery. He is to be entrusted with the administration of the common government because he has declared that the government cannot endure permanently half-slave, half-free, and that the public mind must rest in the belief that slavery is in the course of ultimate extinction. There you go. Slavery, huh? Right there in the friggin' Articles of Secession. Not states' rights, you dummy. And from Texas, by the way, which the legitimate government was overthrown in a coup. Hmm? Let's say they say that she was received as a commonwealth holding, maintaining, and protecting the institution known as Negro slavery, the servitude of the African to the white race within her limits. A relation that existed from the first settlement of her wilderness by the white race and which her people intended should exist in all future time. Her institutions and geographical position established the strongest ties between her and other slave-holding states of the Confederacy. Those ties have been strengthened by association, 
But what has been the course of the government of the United States and of the people and authorities of the non-slaveholding states since our connection with them? Right? So they're there, right in the beginning they say that crap. We hold as undeniable truth that the governments the United States, of the various states and of the Confederate itself were established exclusively by the white race for themselves and their posterity that the African race had no agency in their establishment, they were rightfully held and regarded as an inferior and dependent race, and in that condition only could their existence in this country be rendered beneficial or tolerable. So, there you go. In the name, in the words of the secessionists themselves, the issue is slavery. Right? Yeah. So, say so. If you think so, say so. Don't give me the bullshit about states' rights and Lincoln was coming down there to invade, to take away our property. And don't you think it's pretty goddamn stupid that you're defending an institution where only a tiny majority of the people had any rights, any property, any voting rights, right? Most of them, a white majority down in the South was kept in a completely bestial and servitude state. Right? So, so there you go. It's, it's, that's the issue. Slavery. So, if you believe in the Confederacy, say, blacks should be slaves. Right? Because that's the institution. And, as they state, their defense, or their reason for breaking up the country on behalf of the British Empire, was the issue of defending black slavery. In their own words. Right? So, say so, or shut the fuck up. Right? Okay. Now, for those of my friends from the South, right, I do apologize. Because, as you know me, right, I, I love everybody. So, so, don't take it this. It's just this small minority of lunatics that have this stupid worship of this dumbass time, the, of these stupid plantation owners that had this idiotic conception that they were this new aristocratic class of oligarchs. Right? Okay. All right. So thank you. See you later, and let's bring on the debate, huh? Yeah.